Hello, this is my Lenovo D30 that uh, lately went thermal throttling like crazy. It's like the last line of defense of a processor to defend itself from overheating by decreasing its performance. You know, less power, less watts, less heat. Normally this uh, dual CPU system heats up to 45, maybe 50 degrees uh, Celsius when idle. Under high load it heats up to 75, maybe 80 degrees Celsius. As far as I know, the CPU starts to limit itself around 99, but all of a sudden this machine started to do it around 40, 45. So even during some text editing it can stall. After checking and testing all the obvious uh, things that a user can find and fix possibly, I think it's some deep tech stuff. So, despite the fact that I'm not an IT tech, so I cannot replace, you know, faulty thermal sensors, VRM chips, uh, resistors and stuff like that, still I'm absolutely able to build a new machine, using new parts. So, the heart of this build is an AMD Ryzen 5 2600X. Definitely this 2018 CPU is not the freshest one around. Still, this processor is a sort of overkill for recording and mixing and it's okay for video production. As you can see, it comes stuck with a pretty good cooler called Rate Spire. Oh, what a word. Anyway, I have to keep costs in mind, so it's a blessing that uh, actually AMD packs an effective cooler into the box. It's a nice one, red team. Well, uh, most of my production machines were red team, with a few exceptions, like the Lenovo D30, sporting two Intel Xenons, unfortunately not in an MSI motherboard. I'm not a fanboy, and the shit I buy or speak about is not sponsored anyway, so this is my honest opinion, but I have some great experience using MSI motherboards just like 15 years old machines still working. So I suspect this MSI B450M Mortamax motherboard to be great. I wanted a B450 motherboard with a very good VRM. You know, power is everything. And as far as it seems, B450 motherboards will support present, past and future, at least most of the future Ryzen CPUs. So, by the future, this MSI Mortar Max can dock two M.2 drives. The second one is a planned upgrade somewhere in the future. This box has a lot of content actually, but uh, missing one small thing. A small set of screws. You know, just mount the motherboard. Okay, it will be powered by an OEM Chieftech iArena power supply. Cheap, trusty, that's all. I always had great experience using Chieftech power supplies. The same goes to Kingston. I think I've been using Kingston RAM sticks for at least uh, 15 years or more. I think when something is consistently good, I'm loyal. The same is true for Western Digital Black. I can't remember when I started to use them for audio production, but uh, it was long, long ago and all of them are still operational. Well, this one here is not a hard drive and even not entirely Western Digital. The NAND chips are made by SanDisk. Again, a great company in my book and I want to keep this M.2 drive as cool as possible. So I have this tiny M.2 cooler by Icybox. It's a quite neat little one. On the PC I'm an air cooling junkie anyway. So about the build itself.
By this point, I was already in a mental state that doesn't accept no for an answer. So an oversized 40mm RT cooler and this undersized uh, Dead Space uh, headgear, it's a bad mix, all I can say. So the best if you build something to get into a very calm mindset. So as you can see the 14 cm spinner just fitting nicely. This little rack is ready to mount. So after turning it on, just like in the video, a lot of doubts rushed through my head. Because uh, apart from, you know, speeding up the spinners, nothing happened. Well, that would be the point when you change the lane in the supermarket. And that's where I start to think that the girl missed the date with me. Damn, finally! Quick boot, my ass! So honestly, I had no idea that the first boot takes over 30 seconds. I started to worry like hell. Status lights on the motherboard showed no problems, but what if even they failed? But fortunately it was just initializing. So when BIOS was shown up, I was relieved. So that's it, 